Hello, so I'm going to redo a video on this today. This is a Yugoslavian M1 gas mask. Now, any videos I've had related to Yugoslavian stuff I've basically deleted and I will be redoing most of them because it seems that YouTube's algorithm has got super trigger happy about giving strikes to things relating to both Yugoslavia, the breakup of Yugoslavia and a lot of World War II content. Um, so what I've done is basically deleted everything and I'm just going to refilm it again. So obviously I'll just, you don't want to hear this at the beginning of a gas mask video, but just because you collect the masks and all that does not mean you are in any way associated with the ideology of the people, you know, using this equipment. And that would be true of pretty much any nation ever. But this is from Communist Yugoslavia and it's called the um, Yugo M1, also known as, I think it's the M69 or is it the M59? That's a bit annoying as soon as I start doing the video, I forgot the name of it. But anyway, this is basically a bit of a crap mask. It's a USM 9A1, which is a really good mask, um, made to very, very low standards. The Yugoslavian or Serbian M2, however, is a very good mask, um, at least compared to this. But we'll be covering that in the next video when I redo the video for that. But let's first take a look at this. So fundamentally, this is a 60mm NATO um, M1 mask. Now, point out with Yugoslavia, they were neither associated with the Soviet Union or NATO, basically. Um, Yugoslavia was sort of a neutral communist country that bought whatever they could from anybody. So they had a mishmash of, like, equipment. Um, so one of the respirators they were using for a long time was a USM-9 copy. Um, now, there's two variants of this, as far as I'm aware. There's this one, the M1, and they also did one called the MC1. The only difference is the MC1 is even worse because it doesn't even have an oral nasal cup inside it. Now, this is the mask that has the notorious thing of it sometimes melts. My one hasn't melted, but the rubber certainly doesn't feel like it's in perfect condition. Um, this is a mask where if you can get one really cheap, sure, pick it up, have it as a collectible, but I'd never really recommend you use this for protection from anything. Um, it's, like I said, I like the M9A1 and the Finnish M61s are really well built sort of clones of the M9 licensed copies of the M9. This thing is basically when you take the original mask and you cheapen it down even more. And the weird thing with this one is just the rubber it's made from. So this rubber is notorious for melting randomly. So basically, uh, I don't know if anybody's figured out what causes it, but it, it's either some sort of chemical process that goes on with the rubber over time, because um, apparently some of them are still melt even if people have kept them out with sunlight. I keep this one in the cupboard all the time. Um, but yeah, I, I'd imagine it's just some sort of weird chemical process that goes on with them. Where, I think some people speculated it might be the dye on it that actually starts interacting with the rubber. And over time, that you know, the green, the green looking rubber, which makes it a bit more camouflaged, I suppose, uh, starts eating into the actual rubber itself. But there's not really much to say about it, you know. As I said, if you want a good M9 mask, the Finnish M61s are excellent. This is basically just a poor version of um, an M9, you know. Um, I suppose the lenses are alright, you know, there's, there's some good stuff with it, but in general it's just an M9 but cheaper. It's got the same strap system as the M9. You know, if I literally got my M9 out right now, M9A1, and put it next to this one, the M9A1 is in better condition despite being older. Um, but yeah, Yugoslavia made these up until I think pretty much the 90s, so from the 1950s up until um, the 1990s, whenever it was. Um, and then I'm not sure at which point the M2 entered production, which is the one a lot of people call the Serbian M2 rather than Yugoslavian M2. But that was essentially this scaled down to be a 40mm version of an M9, which is actually a lot better than this one in terms of like quality of components and everything. But um, yeah, so there's a video on that. I'm not be testing it today. I'm sure as I've said, for, I think for when I last tested this one, if I remember right, I think if you put a new sort of newish 60mm filter on or a 60 to 40mm and put a new filter on it made an alright seal in that but you know like I said it's, it's a bit too droopy and everything and you know I would not use this mask if I had to rely on a mask you know when I go out for corona stuff I use half face respirators or some of my full face respirators I don't, wouldn't use something like this um, and I'd also imagine because it the rubber melts on its own maybe it's very susceptible to certain chemical weapons I don't know but there you go so there is the refilmed, very simple video on the Yugoslavian um, M1, basically, and not the MC1, and not an M2, and it's either the M51, M59, or M61 is now, I think it's um, the other designation it's given, but basically there was the M1 and the MC1, the only difference being the MC1 is even cheaper than this one. 
But, you know, it's, I suppose it's a mask and it worked when they were probably within five years of production date, which is what you probably want if you're just massively making masks and issuing them. M9 is not a bad master license, it's just a shame that this one, you know, wasn't made to the same quality as the original M9s or even better, like the um, Finish M61s.